Hello and welcome to the Year 8 Options process. This video will talk you through the process that the Year 8s are embarking on and will give you some points to consider whilst they make their application. This is an exciting time for the Year 8s as they are applying to start to specialise their curriculum. The whole process will run for the next five or six weeks and feature these activities. So we start off with the introductory launch, which is this video and the information that students will be able to find in their Google Classrooms. There will then also be some subject information. Again, in their year eight Google Classroom, students will find um, folders that have got each subject in, including videos and information forms. This will be followed by discussions with their mentors to allow the students to, act, to talk through um, their decisions and to talk through any questions that they may have. They'll also have the opportunity in subject lessons to ask questions and to speak to their subject specialists. This could be either the, their classroom teacher providing them with the information or the heads of departments coming in to do a talk for them. This will be followed by guidance meetings for those students who request one. The information that we're giving throughout um, this pro whole process will give students guidance on what the subjects are like, what experience they can expect, and where their future would go um, having studied the, these subjects. Some students may wish to have a bit more guidance and they can request the guidance meeting through a form that is on Google Classrooms. They will then get issued the application form. We are not issuing the application form to start off with um, due to the fact that we do not want students to instantly fill it in. The form will be um, on Google Classrooms and it is an electronic form. This will mean that as parents, you will need to make sure that you have accompanied your child filling this in so that you are aware of what they have chosen. We then have the application deadline and after that fact, um, I will do the processing of the information and if it is necessary to have further discussions, that will be when those discussions are held. The aim of our curriculum at Bassingbourne is to make sure that our students are successful and they're ready to move on to their next step. We need our students, we want our students to be confident and to have those skills that are ready for the workplace, for further study, for whatever they wish to do. Last year, around 97% of our students left us and went on to either sixth form college, training or employment. The progression routes that we generally have from Bassingbourne are these that you can see on the screen now. So this last year we had 41% um, of our students going off to Long Road with, uh, with Hills Road having 17% and Combaton and CRC also taking the lion's share. The vast majority of our students will go to one of these four colleges. However, they do also go to all sorts of other places, both in Cambridgeshire and further afield. Um, the figures will vary on an annual basis, um, but your son or daughter must stay in education, employment or training until they are 18. So they will be expected to make a progression. If you look through the information that we have issued you, you will realise that there are three different types of qualifications that our students can choose from. We have the GCSEs. These are the um, traditional courses that you would ex that you may have experienced yourself, um, and they are graded from nine to one. They are mainly linear, and obviously I'm talking this in um, non-COVID times. Um, so they're mainly linear, and the most of them will have a hundred percent exam in the summer term of their year eleven. Some subjects, though, such as um, technology, arts, drama, dance, those sorts of subjects where there is a skill involved, um, they will be expected to demonstrate that and therefore may have a, something that's called a non-examined assessment that's worth up to 60% of the course. We then have VCERT and technical awards. Um, these are graded slightly differently, however, they are still a level two course. 
So they are the equivalent level of a GCSE. Um, they get graded as level ones, two, um, and level one and two, pass merit, distinction, and distinction star. Um, and they've designed more for the vocational courses, and they're a combination of the ongoing assessment. So what back in the day would be known as, a, as coursework um, and a, an external exam. And the external exam can be worth anything up to 40%. As I say, those are the more vocational courses and they will have some hands-on experience whilst they are doing those courses. Um, we then have a BTEC course. And again, that because it's um, a vocational course, it has the same grading system as the research and the technical awards. Um, again, it's a combination of ongoing assessment and external assessment, so an exam. And But for BTEC, the external exam is worth 25%. It is worth looking at all three types of courses, and you may well find that one um, suits you better than others. Um, whilst the six forms will treat the different courses um, equally because they are all level two courses, um, some six forms may put in their entry criteria a limit of how many vocational courses um, can be um, can be had in their application profile. Um, I would heartily advise that you have a look at the information that I've put on um, Google Classrooms about the different courses um, that students can go on um, to do and their expectations from the colleges in terms of entry profile so that you are aware of where subjects lead to and if you don't take a certain course, the limitations that um, that might, might have. I've included the next slide so that you can see the comparison um, in terms of grading. Um, and you can see there how the level two um, pass merit distinction is the equivalent of a grade four um, and above in GCSE. Um, I've kept the final column um, just for the parents um, who may still be working on what we'd class as the old grades um, in terms of A star to G just so that you can see where they um, they match to. The option blocks. Now, th this is always a, a part of the options process that the students are most interested in, because obviously this is where their choices um, get to be made. We have not taken away any subjects. Um, from previous years, and we've not added any subjects in. They are the exact same subject choices um, as in recent years. However, to be able to fit our timetable, to um, give a variety for the students to get to make sure that there are suitable pathways, um, they're not necessarily in the same blocks as, as previous years. So we want our students to have a wide range of choice and to allow them to choose a suitable path for them um, for their future destination. We want them to be able to choose a vocational route if that's what they feel that is most suitable for them. If they wish to choose the EBAC route of a language and humanities, that's absolutely fine. They can do that as well. Or if they want to do a mixture of the two things, they can do that. Our blocks are designed so that the students have a choice from each one. We do not insist on any particular combination. We've put these blocks together with our knowledge of the historical um, patterns that our students tend to choose um, and the combinations that will work well for students. Um, however, we do know um, because it's not possible to accommodate all 140 students with exactly what they want. Um, we do know that there will be some students who are disappointed with the choices um, that they are able to make. However, the process is that each student will choose two subjects from each block and they will choose a first choice and a reserve choice from each block. They all need to do this to make the system fair 
um, and to ensure that we can um, follow the application process um, through in a way that no student um, is treated differently to others. One of the things with this system, with any option system really, is that there may well be oversubscription that happens. Certain of our subjects have a set number of students that they can take due to health and safety, um, and there will be a limit on um, classroom sizes as well. Therefore, the order of preference that the students put onto their application form is going to be extremely important. So not only will the students be asked to rank their subjects in each block as their first choice and their second choice in each block, they will also then be asked to rank their subjects, their entire six choices that they've made, um, into their order of preference that they would prefer to do. This is so that if a course is oversubscribed, we can try our hardest to ensure that those who want to do it the most, therefore it is their first choice, um, are able to do this. Whilst we can't guarantee that completely due to the number of students who may well choose it as their first choice, we will use that as our, um, our thought process to start off with. So that order of preference is vital and it means that the students will have to think carefully about their, that order that they put on the application form. There is the, the other end of the scale though as well, where if not enough students apply to do a course, we may not be able to run it because the course will not be viable. In situations of that case, we will look for students to be able to do their reserve choice and um, there will be meetings with those students involved if that is the case. I will say that if a student is thinking of doing a subject, um, they should apply for it um, because there's nothing worse than them thinking about doing it and not applying and then wanting to do it and we've had to make a decision and it meant that it's not being able to run. So please do consider the courses carefully um, and make the decisions fully researched. So these are the curriculum overviews that um, the students will have. So they will study English language and English literature, maths, um, separate sciences or synergy science. Um, and there's more information about the differences between the two um, in the science um, folder on Google Classrooms. And then they'll have two non-qualification courses of core PE and PSD. So PSD um, features all things that will, the students will cover in PSHE um, and some extra information as well about careers and college applications. They then get to choose from the three option blocks. As I've said already, they have to do something from every block. There is no opportunity for students to not do something um, and they will need to choose a first choice and a reserve um, for the process to be fair. So just a quick overview of English, maths and science. Um, so English, that all students will complete both English language and English literature. Um, and there's various exam papers that they will do. We currently use the exam board um, AQA. For maths, we're using Edexcel. And again, there are three exam papers here um, in terms of non-calculator and calculator. And for science, there is the um, separate sciences and synergy science. And the science department will choose the best um, pathway for the students. Um, with their knowledge of how the students learn and um, the best success criteria for them. I've mentioned the specifications there that each of those um, subjects are from. Um, also within the Google Classrooms, you will find the specifications for all of the option subjects as well, um, in case you want to have a look at what sort of things will be studied. So, as I've mentioned, Information about the option subjects can be found in the year eight classroom on Google Classrooms. Um, 
this is where the students will have will know where they're going for it because it is where their assemblies and their student powerpoints um, are found. Um, each subject, there is an information page and a video and the current specification, um, which should give you enough detail about the subjects. Um, the heads of departments were asked to put together the videos in terms of what they would normally say at an op at options evening, um, and therefore that's the information that you have. However, if they don't answer your questions, um, please do contact the head of department to get um, more information. On each um, page, I have put the relevant person for you to contact um, and their email address so that you can direct your questions where they need to go. So the options form itself, it is an application form. Um, because the fact is that we can't guarantee that students will be able to do everything that they wish to do. So the students are applying for their courses. Um, it'll be issued through Google Classrooms on Monday the 17th of May. The idea behind that, as I've said, is to give students time to have done the research um, and to actually start thinking fully through the process and not instantly making their decisions. They must choose two subjects from every block, um, a first choice and the reserve. The form is actually set up so that um, it's very difficult to actually move on without doing, doing that. Um, so therefore, students need to be prepared to have that um, within their, um, their answers and their, within their application. They must make sure that they are not choosing the same subject as the first choice in two blocks. So for example, history is in two blocks. They can't have history as their first choice in both blocks. However, they can have history as their first choice in one and their reserve choice in another. The whole process is not first come first served. We recognise that some students will need to have a bit longer thinking time than others. So therefore, the forms do not get processed until after the deadline. The only thing that will happen will be names being ticked off so that we can be ensuring that all students get their forms in by the, the deadline of the 9th of June. No information about subjects um, and choices will be looked at by anybody until after that point. As I've said several times, the order of preference is important because it will be used to make the decisions if a course is oversubscribed. It is the primary bit of information that we use. Um, it's an electronic form. Students will be ticking a box to say that parents will um, parents agree. Um, it is assumed that the parents have been part of the process and therefore have agreed to what the students have put down. Um, however, um, there will be later on in the process a letter that comes home to confirm what subjects the students have, um, have been allocated. They will, the students will also receive an email copy of what they've applied for. They'll be doing it all through their school accounts um, and when they press submit on the form it will automatically send a record of it. Um, it all needs to be submitted by Wednesday the 9th of June, by 3.20 on Wednesday the 9th of June, um, so that the process can happen, so the next stage can happen. Anything that is handed in after that point will be dealt with after all of the other applications have been dealt with um, and places assigned. That may well mean then that courses are full and students do not get their choices that they, they wish to do. Um, it's not going to be easy for them to forget to hand in the options form. They will have regular reminders, um, but the fairest thing that we can do is if that deadline is missed, then um, we have to treat them after everybody, everybody else. It's the only fair way that we can do things. So also as part of the process, we have careers and work-related learning and features as part of the PSHE process. Um, we have a careers library in the Hive that students can go to and find out about their 
different careers that subjects can lead to. Um, there's a careers website called Euthoria. It's Cambridge based um, and on there has got lots of information about different types of courses, different work related activities, um, apprenticeships and everything um, of that nature. And as I say, it's Cambridge based. So um, there's lots of local information on there too. My choice at 16 is worth a look, um, as is UCAS. Um, my choice at 16 is the application um, process that we use for sixth form colleges in Cambridgeshire. Um, and it features all the different courses that the students can then apply to at age 16. It is worth looking to see if there's any specific entry criteria um, that are needed in addition to the ones um, that I've already mentioned and they're on Google Classrooms. Um, and then UCAS itself um, obviously works at university um, admissions. And again, it's worthwhile if students have got a career in mind to go and have a look at a few degree courses, if that's relevant to them, um, and to see if there's anything specific they need to do um, to be able to be qualified for those courses. Um, Euthoria have lots of information about, about apprenticeships, um, and that's a good place to look if, you, if your student um, if the students are somebody who is looking more as a vocational course, um, it'd be worthwhile to look at apprenticeships um, to see if there are any specific things that they need. Um, we will have careers events um, spread throughout the years um, and we will build upon that and those careers ideas. Um, there are internships the students can do if they wish to do um, work experience in either year 10 or 11. Um, they can apply, they have up to 10 days that they can use um, as long as it's not um, near in any exam periods. Um, we will support the students in that. If anybody is interested in either year 10 or year 11 for an um, internship, just um, they just need to come and see me and I will help them out with that. So just before I finish, some questions to consider. As students, do you enjoy the subject? Is it, you're going to be sat there doing the subject for um, quite a big proportion of your, your timetable, so you need to be um, enjoying it. And have you thought about the requirements of the course? Is it going to mean lots of work that's done independently? Is it going to be lots of exams? You need to find that information out to be able to and know what the course is, is like. The assessment of a course is extremely important. Um, you need to know whether it is something that is ongoing and therefore you need to be quite good at meeting deadlines um, or whether it's something that all the exams are at the end and therefore if you're somebody who can revise really well um, and, and are good at terminal assessments that might be the style of course for you. Have you looked at all the subjects that are on offer? Well, you need to look at everything um, so that you can fully understand and make a good decision. If you don't look at subjects, you're missing out and you might find a subject that you'd never even thought of. All the different styles of qualifications are valid qualifications and you do need to consider all the different styles. Do not be thinking that you can only do one type you can do a mixture of the types and they are all level two qualifications and therefore they are all of the same standard. Do you have a plan for the future? Doesn't matter if you don't. Um, do you have a career in mind? Again, it doesn't matter if you don't. This is the starting point. If you don't have a plan and if you don't have a career in mind, try to make sure that your options are quite wide Make sure that it gives you opportunities that you can go on to um, go on to do anything that you wish to do, um, rather than making them a narrow choice of subjects, which might limit your next steps. Do you know how you're going to achieve whatever your goal is? Have you thought about it? Do you know what the next steps are going to be? And the last question to consider is, have you discussed the choices that you're going to make? 
Those choices are important. You can't make them in isolation. The process that we've set up will require you to talk about it with your class teachers, with your friends, with your, um, with your mentors. I'd also say, definitely, you also need to talk about it with your parents. So make sure that everybody understands what decisions you're making and why you're making them. So just as a final part to this, some dates and reminders for, um, for you. The application form will be issued on um, the 17th of May um, through Google Classrooms. And as I've said before, um, it is not first come, first served. Therefore, it does not need to be filled in on the 17th of May. Students have got quite a bit of time to make those decisions. The, the final deadline for it is the 9th of June, um, but that deadline must be met. Um, so students have got quite a bit of time to make their decision. Um, if you have any questions about any of the subjects, please do email the head of department using the email addresses that are on Google Classrooms. And if you've got any questions about the process itself, um, please feel free to email me. Um, I'm going to end there just with one final reminder about the order of preference being absolutely vital. So when you submit the forms, when the students submit the forms, please do double check that order of preference features the order that you wish me to consider um, for you. We will try our hardest to make sure that students get to do the courses that they want to do. We cannot guarantee it though, um, but I absolutely will try my best to make sure that students get to do the subjects that they want. Thank you.